Well, now let's start start the show. So let's uh, first start. Hank, I don't know whether Hank Previs is here tonight or not. If he's not, I'll just go straight to Phil for the uh, quick tip of the evening. Phil? Hank. Yeah. Actually, I think Hank is here. I think I he's saw here, him here. Yeah. Didn't I see him here? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here, but you can go directly to Phil anyway, because I don't basically have anything. <laughs> well, OK. Thank you, Hank. <laughs> Okay, so this is Phil. So I, I actually was going to start talking tonight about kind of the, the output processing side of this process. And I, I realized that as I went back and looked at where we got to last week, I just didn't get to where I wanted to get to um, in terms of how to find things. Because we kind of went and we looked for uh, an REA sign. If you remember, um, what we kind of began to talk to last week was, you know, how do you find things on the Internet? How do you find objects? art, different things on the internet, and how do you bring those in and use those? And we talked a little bit about, you know, ways to find that. I think we went and we found a railway express agency sign. Uh, but what I really wanted to do was, was take a step back and say, let's assume we're building a model and we've got an office. And we're going to make it, um, you know, if you're in O scale, especially S scale, um, if you open the doors or you have good windows in your buildings, if you light them, people are going to be able to see inside. Um, if you've added some studs under the walls inside, so if they're open, you now need to find some art. So what I said was just real simply, you know, what are the kinds of things that you would find in an office in 1935? What would you want to put on the walls? So the walls look like they were decorated mm -hmm. by the kinds of things. So you know, I just put down some things I look for. Um, you know, are there any other anybody, any other thoughts? You know, I was calendars, posters. Um, you can look for trade advertisements, depending on the kind of business it is. Um, you can look for signs, you know, shipping here, um, office, whatever. You know, those wow. may be things you find or, or make. Um, one of the things I do is also look for paperwork. And sometimes I try to print paper. In O-Scale, you can actually kind of see some of those things. So are, are there other things that you would typically say you would see in an office that you would want to be able to reproduce? No, oh, I added a clock. A clock, clock. Yeah. period yep. clock. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, a clock would be a good item. Um, you know, kind of the point here is if you take a picture of an office and look at all the stuff that's kind of flat, that's the stuff you can look for. So, you know, my thought was, let's just go back to what we were doing before and let's start at the top and say, okay, if we want to find a 1935 calendar for our office, how do we do that? Well, Clearly, the early simple thing to do is put in 1935 calendar. And if we put in, up, oh, I've got some searches there that I went to earlier that have a little bit more detailed searches. We go look at images. And one of the things is you find that there are a lot of reproduction calendars. Um, but, you know, we see one here that we might be interested in. This is a, uh, a truck repair calendar <laughs> from Robert Mock. Um, you notice that open there in a separate window. And we can just look down through here, but what we realize is that you're getting a lot of things that are probably more reproductions. Um, people are putting out multi-year calendars, et cetera. So maybe if we go up here and we put in, you know, vintage. So think about the words that you can do that people would put into documents to describe it. So is it vintage? Because typically vintage is something people use to describe old stuff. And all of a sudden, gee, look at all these great, advertise great calendars we've got you know here's uh this is actually a uh an almanac calendar here's an art deco calendar from 1935 i mean so you the 1936 days of the year a victorian calendar uh, which is the, some of these are not going to be appropriate that are taken at an angle like this but you know if you look at one like this for example that's a pretty interesting looking photo now one of the things we'll find is when we look at it it's actually looks like it's 1939, but we now have something that you could put on the wall of an office. So now what, once we've done that, now we want to get that picture. So if you notice what I did was I went in here, you know, go back to how we did that. We said, gee, that picture looks interesting. When I click on that picture, because it's a shopping advertisement, it actually opens as a new window. This is an eBay ad. And you notice here, it says click for a larger image. That's because they want to show you at higher resolution. 
When you click on that, it's now full page. Generally, what you find is you can click on these and you can copy the image. And now if we copy the image, then we can go paste it into PowerPoint. So what I do is I actually took that slide we worked with last week and I created a place for us to put stuff. So if we copy that image, we can copy that image there. Now, if you look at that, I not, wouldn't necessarily wanna put that on my wall. It's got a little border around it, it's a little uneven. So one of the tools we talked about before, if you right click on the picture, so I'm right clicking on the picture, and it opens all these tools. You notice one of those tools is called the crop tool. And that's a really important tool when dealing with anything like this, because if you click that, what it does, it gives you these bars and you can get rid of all that kind of junk at the edge of the picture. So you just drag it in like that, get rid of that little bit of junk at the edge of the picture. And down here on the bottom, even that little text, you, you really won't be able to see that. So we can bring it up like this and may bring it up to about here, or even maybe bring it up like that. And so now we actually have an image that we can reproduce. And we can now scale that, and we're gonna show you next week how to scale it for photos, but we now have our calendar for our office. But before we leave that, I wanted to show you one other thing that is really important is, you will occasionally hit a page where they have deliberately set an object, a, a photo up, so you cannot copy it. When you click on it, it will magnify, it'll do other things. They're just different ways of doing this in the program. In that case, the best way to do it is actually to just capture it as a screenshot. So if you go on your computer and you hit, and typically on a PC, and if somebody knows exactly how to do this on Mac, yell it out. On a PC, you hit Control-Alt, Print Screen. If you just hit Alt, Print Screen, it captures the whole screen. If you hit control alt screen screen, it captures the current active window. So if I basically hit control alt print screen right now, now when I go back to our sheet here, you'll notice that was what I captured as an object. If I now paste control V, because I captured it to my copy register, you notice what I copied was the picture, but it also brought with it the rest of that browser window. So what do I do? Very simply, click on it, right click, crop, and just crop all that stuff away. Ed? Yes. On, on the Mac, I've been using Shift Command 4. And that's and to capture the screen. Yes. Cool, that, absolutely. And so what you notice here, this is really important is, you know, what I ended up with was this is the same image. And I got it, but I got it there in two different ways. This one I captured as image. This I captured as a screen capture and I cropped it. And so, you know, the beauty, and by the way, the beauty of what we're doing, when you take something like a poster and reproduce it in HO scale, it's so small, this stuff's gonna look good, even if it's not huge high resolution. So, you know, that's a good example. That got us our, our calendar, let's say. Well, you know, maybe we want a poster. So what kind of a poster should we go look for? Oh, hang on, I clicked, the wrong, I clicked the wrong browser window there. So we wanna go over here and instead of looking for a calendar, what if we just put in poster? Now, one of the things I find is when you put in posters in the 1930s, you get a lot of very interesting posters. Um, and some of them you can ignore, you get a lot of these classic, kind of uh, that 1930s, a lot of film posters. Um, you can do great, get lots of interesting things with film posters if you want to put film posters up. Um, you know, if you want to, you can say, instead, another good one is to put in travel. And that generally may bring you up to, you know, something with a transatlantic French line or new luxury ships. Um, and each one of these, again, all you need to do, if you decide, hey, I'd like to have visit Cuba, is go there. Now, generally, when you click on one of these, you can grab that object. Now, notice when I moved over that object, right there, that's the pixel size of that object. And as long as it's that size, when you print it in HO, it's gonna be perfect resolution. So if I wanna put that in my office, I just go over and I click on it, and I come down here and I copy the image, 
And then I go back over to that PowerPoint and I paste the image in PowerPoint. And of course, I probably got to scale it to make it a good size to go in the office. So, you know, I could probably find, you know, equally well, we could find another couple of posters if we wanted to. Um, you know, if you think about other areas you could do, any words you have, just kind of think about topics that people might do. Uh, the other thing that's great is to look at an advertisement for a tractor. So maybe this is a farming community. So let's put in tractor advertisement. Now we can start going down here and say, you know, is there an is there a tractor here? The new Huber. I mean, what an amazing tractor to be able to have. Uh, so I think this is again, you know, kind of an interesting way to pick up those different things. Um, if we go back over to our our office again, I think someone said a clock. So let's see, you know, if we go in here and we say we want a um, vintage office clock. And you, know, you see very quickly that we have a, a fairly large number of choices we can choose from for an office clock. You know, you might want to try to look for something square to make it easier to cut it out when we get done. But, you know, definitely if you wanted the auto light spark plug, you could grab this one. Again, just basic, simple copy image. Come over here to our PowerPoint where we were storing it. Control V, paste the image. And now the image is there. Now that's going to be a little challenge to cut out when you cut it out with a uh, razor knife, but you know, it's a nice image. Now, if you, for example, wanted to do a brown border around that, remember, th this is where you can start manipulating these things is remember we had that idea of, we have a circle up here. We can create a circle. We can make the interior of the circle, excuse me, the interior of the circle, no fill. We can make the output outside of the circle brown, and we can make the weight of that, you know, six points. Or if we click on it, like we did before, remember size and position, we can go over here and we can look at the line and we can make it 12 points. And now we can take that and we can put it around our clock to give us basically a bit more of a band around it. And, you know, remember, you can fill these with pictures and give you some gradient if you want it, you know, to make it a little bit better. But now our clock's got a little bit of more of a frame around it. So, you know, then the other thing that we talked about was, you know, maybe signs. You could do a, you know, a shipping sign or an office sign or those kinds of things. So, you know, the thing that's really interesting is if you think about what we just did, uh, if we'd been doing this probably in a half an hour, 20 minutes, we could have accumulated... 20, 30 signs to be able to put in an office. Um, and I'll show you this next week, how when you go to print these, um, a single four by six image that costs 50 cents can provide you enough signs for your next four models, enough signs, posters, things on the walls. Um, and so we'll come back, I think, next week, and we'll talk about you know, how do we take these, put them in a format with high resolution and get them printed. And once we get them printed, how do we you know, cut them out and finish them so that when you put them in your models, they really look very realistic. So with that, any comments, questions, um, suggestions, complaints? Well, this doesn't have to just be inside a model either. This can be signs for the exterior of a model too. Oh, absolutely, they work great as a porcelain sign on the outside of a model. Um, you know, I'll show you some pictures of, you know, for example, taking one of those. Uh, I did some, uh, some, uh, um, Western Union signs, and you basically take them, and after you paint them, you do. I, I show you do a black. You 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 black the edges of them because that way they don't have seem to have nearly as much thickness. And okay. then you rust them with a little bit of rust using Uncle Ben's, and then hit them with a little bit of dull coat, dull coat, and they look like a well rusted old sign that's been sitting out outside. And the whole process is both a reasonable, and it really doesn't take a huge amount of time. So we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on, on printing and then a bit on finishing over the next couple of weeks on, on specifically those kind of signs. And then we'll go on to decals, which have another set of characteristics to kind of deal with. Okay. Thank cool. you so much. Appreciate it. Welcome.